All right. Just want to welcome each one of you here. If you would uh, gather a little bit closer or at least uh, direct your attention this way and we'll get started. Uh, we are also, um, so long as our technology holds out, live streaming this. So welcome uh, to each one of you. Thank you for joining us in that way. Uh, we also received uh, um, absentee ballots as well, and um, that's been helpful to hear from folks who could not be here today. Okay, if you are back there and you're ready to go, just kind of give me a wave back there. Are we ready to get started? Yeah, let's start. So let's uh, pray together. Again, thank you for uh, staying around. This is uh, so important to the life of uh, our fellowship, life of our church together. So let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, we have declared that you are the lead of Tulare Community Church. You have been leading us uh, for all of history. Our history coming on 50 years here in a couple, Lord, you have been so faithful to us, leading and providing and guiding. And again, we recognize that today. And now pray that you would continue by the power of your spirit to confirm what your will is. Lord, we are eager to follow you and receive your provision. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have uh, two who will be presenting here, two of our elders from our current governance team, and both of these uh, gentlemen are have also been serving for these last two and a half years on our search team. And so I'm going to introduce now Mike Kalmink, who is our vice president of our consistory and also on the search team. Well, welcome. Um, yeah, this is pretty exciting news that we have. And uh, we just uh, are excited about the Reverend Ryan Hall uh, joining us. We've, uh, we've extended him a, uh, uh, an invitation to join us, and he has accepted. He will be uh, ordained next week, uh, Saturday, I believe, out of uh, Western Seminary in Holland, Michigan. He'll be uh, ordained. And uh, he'll be here in, uh, oh, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks, something like that. And uh, so we're excited about that. And uh, we, uh, we hope that you guys are excited with us. Along with that process, uh, we as a consistory um, have met and uh, have come to the conclusion that we think that uh, Steve should become the lead pastor as mentoring these young leaders that we have uh, up into the ministry as leaders themselves. And along uh, how we got through that process and uh, how we got to where we're at today, John's gonna give a little bit of history uh, as far as uh, what we did. I think you have a little guideline uh, on your paper here, and that'll give you a little history on how we uh, got to where we're at. John? Thanks, Mike. Morning, everyone. Hey, it's been uh, two and a half years, so take a look at that sheet. It gives our breakdown that'll give the details of uh, what we went in those two what we went through in those two and a half years but first of all I want to I want to have the search team there's a we started with a team of nine members two and a half years ago Dustin Swall moved up to Idaho so we went down to eight members I would like those team members that have uh, put their their heart prayers uh, uh, time and commitment to TCC and and the search process to stand up if you're here today I saw Ashley uh, Miller, thank you, Ashley, and Elisa DeYoung. I see Diana Bosma, Rick Boss. Who am I missing? We got Mike Kelmick, myself, Ed Borchi. Uh, what what a team! I, uh, just, hey, stay standing because I'm going to be up here for a while. What a team! Uh, I, I just want to you know call out everybody individually. Ashley, you brought a lot of lot of energy and, and vibrancy to the committee. A lot of thinking outside of what we just think normally sometimes and uh, thank you for that Ashley. Elisa, you know Elisa had a baby during the whole term, two and a half years she pops out a baby and she stayed on the team. I, I thank you Elisa for doing that because uh, she was saying well maybe I should step off and, and she, she, she strove through that. I appreciate you Elisa and uh, we had a little tough time with the Zoom interviews although you know so Elisa was home you know doing a lot of cooking demonstrations while we're Zooming. <laughs> it was hard to focus on that one but uh, thanks Elisa that was fun. Uh, Ed definitely some wisdom you brought and your friendship Ed to the team. I thank you for that. Uh, 
definitely uh, bring uh, the heart and soul of uh, what TCC is about here today. Uh, Blake, thank you. Blake Wilbur, uh, thank you for being a part of the team, uh, your friendship and, uh, and, and your, your wisdom. I mean, Blake, you're one of the younger guys on the team, but I, I see your wisdom, your intercession, and your gift that you have and you brought to the team. And uh, Rick, Rick is one of those guys, he tells it like it is. Rick Voss, thanks for uh, being, being that rock on the team and, and part of uh, consistory. Rick was a deacon when we started and then termed out when we finished. But Rick, I thank you for being a part of the team. And, and you want to talk about a workhorse. You guys know how hard Diana Bosma works? Oh, man. Diana, thank you. Your, your hard work, she was the glue of our organizational structure. And, and if, if a team doesn't have someone like Diana on that team, it, it doesn't uh, function well. We're kind of all stumbling over each other. But Diana, I thank you for, for doing that uh, part of that team. And then Mike, Mike, I thank you for uh, being the yin to my yang. I, I have a coach uh, I coach with in basketball, and he always uses that term, the yin and yang. Mike and I, all, all, you know, we see some things differently, but in the end, the goal was, was accomplished. And, uh, and, and Mike, I thank you for your friendship. And, and you know, we, uh, we're here after two and a half years of, of this teamwork, and, and you were definitely a part of that. And thanks, Mike. But again, uh, got a quick comment here, too as we get to the process. Uh, oh, you can sit down, team. Thank you. One more round of applause for the two and a half years they put into it. And real quick comment about Dustin Swall. I don't know if he'll ever see this or get this, but I'm going to send him a text, too. But Dustin Swall was one of those guys in Blake Wilbur. You know, you guys realize we, we listen to so many sermons as a team, and Dustin Swall and Blake were the, the, the hard true guys that were on the tractor listening to sermon and sermon and sermon and they had notes broke down on a lot of people all the time because they were diligent and Dustin was one of the the kings of that is listening to those sermons in those tractor tractor times Uh, and then this is what your team went through we are seeking God's divine guidance through all this Ty how appropriate it is that you have we got to be all in you got to humble yourself and you got to submit and we got to accept something that maybe doesn't look like what we're looking for. And then finally, we're thankful and fearful. You know, how humbling is that? You know, I hope you guys can all feel that in all this. So we as a team looked at uh, two, two real good candidates. Uh, we had uh, a guy named Dan Gillette and Tim Breen came through here. Boy, those guys, were, those guys are pillars within our RCA church. We looked at them. We looked at them steadfastly. They looked at us. And part of, part of what we see, and if you look at that uh, little breakdown in that paper, is what we found out was, you know what, the Spirit wasn't moving, uh, not in them and, and not in us to put us together. And we were all right with that because, uh, you know, that's what we kept praying about was, where are you directing us, God? Where, where is this leading us? And so from that, all of a sudden we were kind of in a, in a stalemate. This is after two, two years through, and all, all of a sudden uh, we got word from uh, Western that this 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 real great candidate's gonna, you know, graduate and, and you know, looking to find a church. And so we said, hey, what does that look like? And so we kind of discussed it as a team. And then we went back to cons- consistory, you know, being that Mike and I were, and, and Ed passed consistory, and, and uh, Rick uh, is one of the deacons, and Blake. So we, we said, what, what does that look like? And we threw it back up to consistory and said, well, well yeah, I mean, He's qualified. He's got all the all the gifts, uh, uh, gifts of discipleship, and all this stuff, and and also in the same token, our, our staff, what a what a bang up job they they did. You know, the two years that we're we're going into before COVID, pre COVID, you can't judge it based on COVID. But I want to I want to round of applause for the staff in the two years without a lead pastor. <laughs> Although. There was an interim lead, and Steve, we appreciate you for that, and that, I think that's what led us here, is uh, what we're you know showing you guys as a congregation is that it went back to the consistory, search team uh, kicked it back to the consistory, said yeah we got this young guy, but you know it's up to you guys to figure out what this looks like, and then so consistory dialogued and and we went back with the search team, and then lo and behold this is kind of the proposal we had we we got a young guy coming out. His gift is discipleship. He, if you were here the Sunday he preached, he's a, he's a bang-up preacher just at a young age, just you know, equally as talented as Ty and our other young staff. 
And because we looked at that Dan Gillette model, I believe, in the past about Dan leading, you know, a group of young guys and, and, and you know, speaking wisdom into their lives, uh, you know, be it Shane, Ty, and, and, and Ryan coming in, we, we said, well, what does this look like, Steve? And, and so Mike and I approached Steve and, and, and talked about it. And so that's where we are today, to, to see Steve as our lead pastor here at TCC and bringing Ryan Hall in as a, a pastor of discipleship and letting him flourish along with uh, our other people on staff. So I, I hope that summarizes it in, in all. We will willing to, anything I missed, Mike? Mike, we always tag team together. And, and if there's anything I missed on that to just, fill in. Just one note is that we met with the elders and the elders at large. And, and we really got the heart of, of where we were at in this process. And I think that that, that brought a lot of uh, strength to us and, and gave us some real wisdom and guidance in this process. And I think that helped us a bunch uh, determining what was, what was the way to go here. Yeah. So that's uh, kind of my report from the search team. I, I appreciate, again, a search team, you guys, you guys are, are, are stud, you guys. We, it was, a, it was a team that everybody used their gifts. Not everybody brought the same gift, but it was a team that I, I love when I see a team is where you know you take everybody and everybody contributes. And, and we challenged each other. We challenged each other uh, in, in ways that uh, we didn't think we'd be challenged. And, and that, is, that is the fun part, is when you are, you are pushed, your faith is, is encouraged, and two and a half years later, you know, this, this is a, a beautiful morning for me, so. Yeah, and with that, um, yeah, I'd just like to uh, echo one thing about Ty's message today was really uh, appropriate, I felt, because um, you talk about uh, starting out a process and then following God's leading and not looking at all like what you started out looking for, and uh, I think that's where we're at today, but I think we're in a really great place, and uh, with that, uh, I'd like to uh, ask Steve a question, and I know you guys are all uh, probably have a few questions of your own, but I want to start out with a question for Steve for him to answer, uh, and, and hopefully that'll give a little clarity to uh, some of your, your questions already. So, Steve, uh, after several different processes where you've been uh, the uh, interim pastor in the past and currently, and, and uh, we've been through this process several times, and What's different now? Why now? And all these other times, and, and up to this point, it really wasn't something that you were looking at, becoming the lead pastor, the senior pastor. Why now? Why is the senior pastor position uh, look like that's something you're willing to do now and, and you think you can do well? Well, thanks, uh, Mike and John. How many of you think like that's a good question? Like, why now after all these years? That is a really good question. Uh, one that, yeah, I've I've asked myself, and uh, Susan and I, and I've been thinking about it and talking about it as well. It certainly wasn't something, um, you know, that I was looking at, uh, but but it's the right thing, and I am encouraged to share with you at least a few bullet points. Uh, as to how we got here and why I'm sensing that uh, this is a good thing. So maybe the first place to start is just, again, to reiterate my love for Tulare Community Church, my, t my love for you over these 34 years. And so as I think uh, about this particular time in our history, uh, I believe that this is the very best way that I can love and serve to Larry Community Church. During this part of my life and career, um, all things considered, I believe this is, it is the call that the Lord has on me to serve you and serve uh, our young, talented, gifted staff um, and the very best way that I can uh, love you. Um, we've had two and a half years to live into a leadership structure that I believe is functioning very effectively uh, with our entire staff. Uh, in this leadership structure, most importantly for me personally, is that while leading and mentoring our staff, it keeps me in my areas of passion and of giftedness. If I look back at 
other opportunities and other times in our history where there was a possibility of stepping into a lead pastor position. It would have pulled me out of areas that I'm most gifted by the Holy Spirit and most passionate about. So caring would have had to be put aside or reaching out into the community or mentoring uh, our uh, young staff. Some of those kind of things um, wouldn't have... Uh, yeah, wouldn't have been um, so much lifted up. So the fact that I can continue to shepherd you, to care for you, to care for our community at large, and then um, preach when it makes sense. I mean, we have such effective preachers uh, with our current um, staff, with, uh, with Ty and Shane, and now with Ryan coming on. I will still preach on occasion, but uh, only when it makes sense. And... Um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing for that's a good thing for you and that's a good thing for me that I am not preaching all the time. Um, if it had not been for the long wait, and this is where you see the Lord leading, if it had not been for this long two two plus years wait, we would have not seen uh, our um, what we actually had right here among us. And so that has been. Um, exciting to see our staff. They're so gifted, and it has helped us not only get clearer on what my passion areas and my gifted areas are, but also on the areas that our staff are gifted uh, and passionate about. And that includes now Reverend Ryan Hall, who will be a great addition to our team. Uh, in addition, then, with him coming on, it kind of gives us that new thing, that that reveal. I mean, going through two plus years and going, okay, we finally found our next senior pastor, and it's Steve. And everyone goes like, well, man, we've seen this guy for like 34 years what, what, after all that. And so, again, with our young staff and with the, with the, um, the skills and gifts they bring, and then with uh, Ryan coming on, it brings that something new um, to our, our team and uh, very, very excited about how it now completes us as a, a team. Um, on a more personal front, when we received uh, the, um, the call from, well, I received the call from one of our candidates who I was very excited about serving. I could see him being here. It was, uh, it was a guy I was very much looking forward to serving with and he with us, and um, when he just did not sense that it was the Spirit's leading and I received that call from him, I, it, it really was a moment um, that the Spirit really just settled me down because, well, I'll just tell you, I was in the parking lot of Smart and Final, and I got this word from him, and, I, and, and it was right at the very beginning of this pandemic, and you're just going, oh, Lord, what is going on here? And there was just this real clear sense, no, it's okay. It's okay. We have this. We have a great team. We have a great thing going on. You can do this. You're going to be doing it for a while. He didn't say how long, but it just had this sense, hey, this is going to happen for a while, and it's going to be it's going to be good, and we have, you know, I, we, the Lord has us, and, and the Lord, um, you know, just really assured he had me as well. And so that was uh, very much of an encouragement. It, in addition to that, then uh, the team, our current staff, started to imagine what it would look like. Okay, if, if there's not going to be another person coming, what would it look like? as we're doing now, what do we need? And uh, so there was great encouragement from the staff in that regard. And then of course, as you heard Mike and John with the teams approaching me and then going through a very lengthy, very deliberate process that really surfaced some of the, you know, the issues and the challenges and some of the things that we would have to account for has just been so helpful. So between the staff, between our current full consistory, the elders at large coming together, and then classes, classes leaders, there, uh, there's been just a, a lot of affirmation and confirmation that need to at least put myself there and to um, take this step of faith. And so actually listening to uh, my own sermons is that when we follow the lead of the, the Lord and step into the call that he has for us, it may take us out of some of our comfort zones. And uh, that certainly is the case, but one that I'm very excited about and, and eager to step into um, 
Yeah, and we are looking then, of course, to you to affirm that. We need to hear your voice. That's part of our uh, book of church order and even in our bylaws. Uh, so we've worked hard on the communication piece over these last two years, uh, bringing things to the governance team, bringing things to you, having teams set up where we're hearing from you. And so want to give you that opportunity uh, this morning to ask questions uh, before we take this vote of affirmation. And so we have a couple uh, microphones up here. Um, please feel free to step up and ask a question that you may have, or if you're too shy, ask the person next to you who's not so shy to come up and ask that question. But uh, let's take some time for that right now. Okay, that's better. Uh, no, one concern I have, we have two young bucks that have been performing admirably, admirably so far, now we have three. Mm -hmm. is there, uh, how's that chain of command or how how are you going to deal with that when there's three there's more competition than two and uh you see any is there going to be defined job descriptions or how are you going to work on that yeah great that's a great question but thank you so yeah the we are in the process now of of writing up uh, and getting greater clarity on the various job descriptions so shane will be stepping up into a commission pastor role. He's almost finished with that. Ty is in seminary as we speak, and so we'll be moving in that direction as well. And then you have uh, Reverend Ryan Hall, who is the minister of word and sacrament, and you're going, wow, what is the Lord doing putting all these people on our team? So again, um, definitely uh, Shane and Ryan will will be carrying the the lion's share of the preaching load. Ty will as well, although you have to remember Ty is also um, in lead of our student ministry, so he is sharing the word weekly, and he's just a, a consummate uh, team player. He's amazing what he brings to our staff and can do it, and so he will, he will continue to preach as well, but maybe not as much, and me neither. But that does do something of uh, what I think is our greatest challenge right now, and that is creating other opportunities, because we are not going to put people on the bench and just have them sit there. We need to create different avenues to share God's word. So, of course, with Shane's giftedness um, with film and with uh, with the video and his teaching gift and, and, and Ty too, as far as that goes, we are going to be really, um, reaching out more with our online presence, creating, creating those kind of things, even in a greater way. Uh, we are going to be looking for ways to, uh, create other services, perhaps midweek, uh, we have to be in a place where um, we are using these staffs and uh, staff members because they are so gifted. Uh, you mentioned competition, and I'm, I, I want to just uh, encourage you to keep encouraging um, our leaders and, and um, yeah, just keep encouraging them. And by all means, stay away from oh, this is my favorite, that's my favorite. I mean, we are competing with each other against the enemy, not against each other. And so, again, uh, be a part of that encouragement as well. That's one swing at it. Other, other questions? Okay, well, then I'm going to um, invite you then, if you are a committed disciple slash member of Tulare Community Church, if you would just take a moment to prayerfully uh, fill out that um, ballot card. Uh, there is a place for comments. Please feel free to use those. And then uh, those are going to be collected, and then that will give us a count uh, how many of you are here uh, today. So let's pray. Father, we're going to do our very best now to um, follow your lead. And um, again, we offer ourselves to you. I offer myself to you, Lord. I love you and I love this church. And I pray that 
where you've led now, that you will continue to give vision and provision. Lord, expand, oh Lord, expand our, uh, our reach in your name, Jesus. Online, in the community, all over the place. Lord, it is not by accident that we are out here on the front lawn, Lord. Again, being led to be a blessing to our community. Father, we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you would fill that out, and then we have uh, some of our deacons, if you could walk around and uh, collect those, please. And uh, bring those forward. Hey, just for while we're uh, collecting those, and we'll uh, count them up real quick before you leave, uh, uh, John is going to give us a, a, a few more data points from the search process. John, there we go. Hey, so every, everyone, if, just another shout out to the team. We, we looked at almost over 75 candidates. When I talk about listening to sermons, we, we went through, through lists and lists of, of pastors out there that could be potentials for TCC. Uh, one of the approaches we took, you know, with our relationship with Western Seminary is uh, reached out to him and said, hey, you know, you had all these people that graduated from Western Seminary. Why don't you give us a top three from about a 10-year span of classes? Because, uh, you know, we have such a good relationship, and so they threw them all out at us. We got 30 names from Western, and we went out, and your team dissected between nine of us. We each took three or four. And we reached out to these people, whether they were looking for a call or not. We said, hey, you know, we're looking for some pastors here. And then both times during the, I want to say, February to April time span, we doubled down as a team feeling that that was a time that God wants us to move hard on this thing because people make decisions in the spring for fall programs, whether they're moving schools and stuff like that. And so we're actually meeting uh, almost every week or every other week. We, we, we got real aggressive during those times, and we, we felt that was a, a fruitful uh, opportunity to go out there and see what's out there. And one thing, just to let you know, we found out from, from one of the candidates says, 20, 25 years ago, there used to be, they called it parking spots. And if, if I may, Steve, there, there, were, there were, the parking spots were full. There were plenty of pastors and plenty of churches. Today, there's a lot of churches that have empty parking spots, meaning there's no pastor in that spot. And so with that, we had one candidate that was actually had a call from two other a couple candidates had calls from two other churches as we were talk in talks with him, or those uh, candidates. So, so there it was. It was quite a learning process of what's actually going on in our in our our world today, as far as pastors go. So, so just yeah. Uh, again, it was a educational process for your team, and I just thought I'd throw out some data points for you as they're counting the ballots. <laughs> I think, I think John mentioned this, but it, it, it's uh, worth mentioning, is that this Saturday, if you would uh, be praying for uh, Ryan, uh, he will be, this coming Saturday, be ordained at, um, at Pillar Church. He is on, he's been on staff there at Pillar Church, which is a Christian Reformed, Reformed Church connected um, in Holland, Michigan. And... Uh, this is where Jonathan Brown is the pastor, and uh, that's you know, Tim Brown's um, son. And so these guys are so very high on Ryan, and so he'll be ordained there. And um, it would be good for you to be praying so uh, for him. Um, so that would be 1 o'clock next week, Saturday, our time. Uh, John and Linda are going to be there, as it turns out, uh, representing Tulare Community Church. As is Phil and Judy Vanette, they will be there, as long, along with uh, Pastor Tim Vink, and so they were all, they will all be there for uh, uh, for us representing and again just encouraging this uh, young leader. Uh, Phil made it clear that he wasn't a he wasn't a speaking kind of guy. He didn't want to get up front, but I did talk he and Judy in doing a liturgical dance for the event, and he was all uh, all up for that. So. Um, yeah, we're excited for, for them. And then on the 19th, 
we're expecting uh, Ryan and his wife Claire uh, to be in town here, and uh, his start date would the, be on the uh, 24th, uh, as we have it planned now, uh, Lord willing. He obviously has to travel cross country. Um, so we're starting to look for accommodations. If you have a, a brilliant idea or a, the perfect place for them, uh, please let us know, uh, and uh, we'll present that to them as an option, so, okay. So the vote of affirmation has passed, 165 yeses and four noes for a total of 169 in attendance. So praise God. We just uh, thank all of you. You know, I'd just like to say a special thanks to, to Ty and Shane, who've put in a lot of work these last couple of years. and. And, uh, and Steve as well, thank you so much for being the interim all this time. And, and uh, yeah, we just, we just praise God that we have such a fantastic team and that we're going to have uh, Reverend Ryan Hall joining us also. It's an amazing, uh, amazing group of guys, and we just got to thank God for that. So thank you all for being here. And uh, you want to close? Sure. Okay. sure. So Steve, would you close us in prayer then? Okay. Hey, let's stand, if you would, please. Let's uh, sing the doxology, and then I'll close in prayer. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you so very much. Find us faithful now in following. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.